I know that this is a very difficult time for many of you out there. We're being attacked by this virus, totally disturbing our whole society. But at the same time, something very positive is beginning to happen. Last year, 181 of the top 200 CEOs in America made a new commitment. They said, we will no longer be focusing on profits only. We are committed to having better relationships with our customers. We are committed to looking at our employees differently to build their skills and capability, to help them build their skills and capabilities, to look at our suppliers differently as partners, not as adversaries, to look at the environment, to look at the community, and to look at the long term, not the short term anymore. This is a radical, drastic change because for the last 50 years, American corporations have been primarily searching for profits only. They said in the past, if a company wants to do something good, then the owner should do it. It's not up to the CEO, but that's all changed. I was affected by that statement and I decided to write a book. The guy was affected by that statement and I decided to write a book. The guide, the leader's guide to social, for social responsibility. The leader's guide for social responsibility. I felt that from my 50 years experience of publishing 250 management books, of being to Japan 94 times, that I might offer something that could help you really look at your companies differently to become socially responsible. Now look, in one sense, this is very simple because all of you know the right thing. You know what the right thing is. You don't have to be told the right thing. You know the right thing in relationship to your customers, but for one reason, because of the pressure of profit only, you've tried to reduce costs in serving your, your, your customers. When I pick up a phone and I call any large corporation, I'm gonna get a computer. And the computer's going to interrupt and not allow me to speak to people. That's their job, is to try to not allow me. Well, maybe eventually they'll give me something, someone to, to speak to. In customer service, where do they send it to? They send it to the Orient, to India, to the Philippines. They send it to the low-cost countries so they can save money on customer service. Well, that's been really foolish in so many sense. Because if you really make a great connection with that customer, you have them for life. And if you learn from the customer, listen from the customer, you can come up with so many great products and new services. And the employees. In the past, we've been looking at the employees as if they're all been expendable. Hewlett Packard, for example, laid off 120,000 people. How could such a great company exist in the long term and do that. And of course, they won't exist. Hewlett Packard today is not the same company that it used to be. And suppliers. We used to look at suppliers as almost the enemy, trying to get the lowest, the lowest price from them instead of looking as partners, how we can together build a great product for our common success, just the way Toyota did. And look at our communities. Look at the plastic in our ocean. Look at the pollution in our air. We've totally neglected our communities. Most of our bridges in America are in need of, of repair. We have to change. Well, these CEOs have made a new commitment. That means they've given us a new opportunity to rethink how we relate to each other. Well, Ahmed and, and Christophe, and I are going to be putting together a workshop to work with you to help you just do the right thing. You already know how to do it. We're there to just coach you and to help you go in the right direction. And we think that we can. So you stay tuned. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.